I've returned. What news? Have you found the Heartstone Gem? Oh, this is terrible news. Did you find any clues as to who these mysterious thieves may be, or where they might have taken the gem? The liquid appears to be a form of undiluted snake venom. No doubt this priest of Tolona was carrying it for use as a poison. You did well in bringing this to me. This may be just the clue we needed. You see, once extracted, Venom such as this tends to lose its potency rather quickly, usually over the course of a few days. So it follows that this Talonite must have obtained the poison from somewhere within these mountains. There is only one place where poisonous reptiles could thrive in these cold, windswept mountains. Dragon's Eye. It is a vast network of caverns that lead deep into the bowels of a dormant volcano. The entrance is barely a day's journey from here. I suggest you continue the search for the missing Heartstone gem there. I shall mark the location for you on your map. Take care. The caverns of Dragon's Eye are fraught with many perils. Tread lightly, and be wary of the creatures that dwell within its depths. After a day's journey through the mountains surrounding Kaldahar, a small band of would-be heroes finally stood before the towering crag of rock that marked the entrance to Dragon's Eye. Somewhere within the depths of the volcanic cavern lay the missing Heartstone Gem, and perhaps with it, the answer to who or what was behind the disturbances in Kaldahar.
it has come to this, has it? I did not expect a group of natives to interfere with my vendetta. Why have you come here killing my minions? They are not snake people, you ignorant pig. They are Yanti, faithful servants and worthy heirs to the kingdom I shall leave behind once my business is finished. My vendetta is none of your concern. Your involvement in this matter is relevant in the grand scheme of things, a mote of dust floating for a moment in a sea of time. My interest in the Hearthstone Gem is personal. I have been waging a war for quite some time. This world is simply another battlefield. The gem is one of several instruments I use to fight my battles. I am Exonomai. I am a soldier. The gem is an item with incredible powers of divination. Only those with special relationships with the natural or supernatural may use it. It gives sight beyond sight, even penetrating physical and magical barriers in its revelations. I am not using it to cover up my affairs. I am using it for personal reasons. You cannot have it. It is mine. When I am finished with it, my faithful servants will have it. If they fail on their plans, simply take it from them. I have little patience when it comes to incompetence. You have just destroyed a good portion of my army and are now demanding that I hand over more resources to you. I believe I will be doing the taking now. Pray that your souls are prepared. Thanks, Sylvanus, you have returned. Evil is afoot in Kaldahar. Strange orcs prowl through town, killing our townspeople. I must ask you, have you found the source of evil in Dragon's Eye? Excellent. Thank you for destroying my ancient enemy. I couldn't have planned this better myself. I am sure Exonomai must have explained it to you. She and I have been foes for centuries. Thanks to you, the vendetta has ended. Arundel is bleeding out his life above us. Now I can begin to build my forces in this world without fear. Who am I? I am but a simple priest, spreading the gospel of suffering to the masses. Soon, you will all know the litany of our faith. I'd start praying now if I were you. <laughs> Farewell. <coughs> At last. I feared I could not hold any longer. The, the last of my life has almost left my body, and soon I shall be restored to the balance. A man, but not a man. He wore my skin like a cloak, my face like a mask. He came suddenly in the night and struck me down. Nature itself seemed to recoil from him. Even with the strength of the great oak bolstering me, I was unable to stop him. He touched me once, his hands as blood, and I felt my life begin to drain away. No. Only the hope you would return has kept my body alive. You must take the Heartstone Gem to the Elven Fortress of the Severed Hand. The Severed Hand is the prison of Laurel, one of the last of the Elven Archmages. He is the only one left who can use the Heartstone Gem, if he still lives. It is to the south. Nature will guide you. Enough of my power remains that I may do that. And now, I must go. Serve the balance. Protect Kaldahar from this evil. Following the map left for them by the slain archdruid, the party arrived at the towering ruins of the Severed Hand. Guided by the Archdruid's cryptic last words, the adventurers prepared to enter the crumbling tower and seek out this mysterious Laryl in the hopes that he might have the power to use the Hearthstone Gem. For without the vision of the gem, the evil in the past might never be revealed and the town of Kaldahar would be doomed to a frozen fate.
Greetings, adventurers. Pardon me while I gather my thoughts. Who are you, and what has just come to pass? Indeed you have, noble adventurers. It must have taken great courage and strength to make it as far as you did, let alone restore some balance to my thoughts. I am eternally in your debt. But surely you did not come to the hand of the Seldarine on a whim. Tell me what it is you seek. You wish to learn what came to pass within the hand of the Seldarine. Very well. There is much to tell. Shall I start with the time of prosperity, the betrayal, or our darkest hour? In light of the greater threat of the orcish and goblin hordes of the north, we elves allied ourselves with the dwarves. The alliance was a desperate one, but it was either that or fall to the dark hordes. As both races prospered from our mutual cooperation, we furthered our bonds by creating powerful artifacts and weapons. Delicate dwarven craftsmanship, combined with ancient elven magic, yielded items of great power and unsurpassed beauty. With the unity of our two races wielding the magical benefits of our labor, the hordes were easily kept in check. Our cooperation continued, and we prospered in harmony for many decades. Until the betrayal. You will need to be patient as this is a bitter subject for me. A great debate ensued with our dwarven allies regarding the magic items created by our union. It seems the greed inherent in all dwarves could not be contained. They wanted to begin selling our magic items to the other settlements in the north. Preposterous, I told them. To allow others access to these artifacts, all for the sake of profit. I was appalled, but not surprised. Dwarves cannot resist their selfish nature for long. My people and I were adamant that the humans were not to have any access to any magical artifacts. After many months of debate, the dwarves conceded, and we thought the issue done. Then, a day came that marked the fate of both races. Our forces encountered what we thought another typical group of the orc and goblin hordes. What should have been an easy battle turned out to be a hard-fought victory. For they were using artifacts and weapons created by the Alliance. Furious, we questioned the dwarves about this. No elf would ever give our greatest treasures to a hated enemy. The dwarves, of course, denied our accusations. In honor of our alliance through the decades, we extended our trust further and tried to come to some solution. We were fools to believe we could coexist with these rock eaters. Any and all discussions just turned into open argument and further accusations. Did the dwarves think we'd be stupid enough to assume that the artifacts just magically appeared in the Horde's camps? As to be expected, open conflict broke out. The decades of friendship and prosperity ended that day. The Alliance was no more. On that day, the Elves of the Hand of the Seldarine were alone against the Dwarves and the Goblinoid Hordes. You wish to learn what came to pass within the Hand of the Seldarine. Centuries ago, the Hand of the Seldarine waged war with the Dark Hordes encroaching on the North. This war waged for decades, and towards the end, we found ourselves in a losing position. The tide of war was against us. Our forces were diminishing slowly but surely after every conflict. We were isolated from the rest of the Elves south of us. With no support from our brothers and sisters, and impending doom at our doorstep, I became desperate. I concocted a plan to protect my people and buy us some time. Ancient Elven magic speaks of a spell used in days of old, named the Mythal. This mythal embodies the land with a living and protective life force, personifying all that is elven. This living force can also be given abilities of a protective nature, powers that would have kept the Dark Hordes away from the hand of the Seldarine and its surrounding lands. A chance to buy my people time and to marshal reinforcements from our southern brothers and sisters. 
Some say believing we had the power to bestow such magic was arrogance. Others would say using the mythal in such a way was blasphemous. I stand by my decision. I did what I had to do to save my people. We began the preparations to lay a mythal. In the weeks that came to pass, we fortified what remained of our forces within the hand. My wizards and I locked ourselves within this tower and began the arduous process of laying a mythal. Within this time, the orcs and goblins sensed our weakened state and moved in for the kill. The largest force we had ever seen besieged the hand, and the mythal was not near completion. We knew this was our last stand, and my people knew they had to buy time. For a week, we held the horde back. Entrenched in our home, my people fought, and the horde paid dearly for every room of the hand they took. For every elf that fell, the horde paid tenfold. For all the sacrifices my people made, the last line was breached in a week's time. As the horde began ascending the towers and the last of the defenders fell, I realized my people's sacrifice was not made in vain. We completed the last incantations for the mythal. The spell was cast, and a shroud of pure light and energy engulfed the hand. As I watched what I thought was our salvation enter every crevice of the hand, I became horrified. Something had gone terribly wrong. The force that was supposed to bring life to the land began to twist and corrupt it. It was draining everything and everyone within the hand of its soul. I watched as every living thing within the hand of the Seldarine had its life drained to the brink of death, driving them mad. Those who died in the battle began to rise as hideous undead. It was at this point where I realized I wasn't the only one watching the rampant destruction of the Hand and all within. Standing before me was Labellus Enereth, the elven god of longevity and time. He was angry with me, angry as he saw the most ancient of elven magic used with carelessness, angry as he watched the lives and the land of his people being unnaturally twisted, angry that my pride and arrogance led to the breakdown of the union between the elves and the dwarves. I was transformed into a Baelorn. My punishment was to watch over the runes of the Hand of the Seldarine and its people, cursed forever until the astrolabe was restored by putting my people to proper rest. You wish to learn what came to pass within the Hand of the Seldarine? As simple as that question is, I do not have an answer. Perhaps there are other elves here that need my help to return to Arvindor. Maybe there is something else I need to resolve in order to complete my punishment. But surely you did not come to the hand of the Seldarine on a whim. Tell me what it is you seek. Very well. As legend states, the Hearthstone Gem is an ancient artifact from a time long forgotten. Its most notable owners were the Druids of Kaldahar before one within their circle stole the gem. It was thought forever lost, until now. The Hearthstone Gem contains powerful scrying abilities that can divine the affairs of people throughout the realms. There are only a few within the land who know how to release its powers. I am one of them. With that said, what is it you seek to learn from the Hearthstone Gem? Then you will have what you seek. Hand me the Hearthstone Gem. Freed from the shackles of his tormented mind, the cursed Elven Lord was at last able to assist the heroes in their quest. Handing over the Hearthstone Gem, the party stood back and watched Laro begin his divination. With the artifact raised before him, clutched tightly in his skeletal hands, the undead sorcerer peered intently into the gem as he whispered a series of strange chants and incantations. A spark of light briefly flashed within the gem, as if a ray of sunlight had caught upon its surface. And suddenly, reflected within the mirrored facets of the stone, there appeared an image of a statue. The statue was clearly a monument of sorts, 
depicting an elf and a dwarf sitting side by side on a dual throne. Even if Labalus's curse had taken my eyesight, I would still recognize that hole. What you have seen is Dorne's Deep, den of the betrayers. In here is where the wretched dwarves hollowed out their home. Be warned if your journey takes you there. If any of the dwarves remain, expect no quarter, for they will give none. Believe none of their lies, as they will all lead to treachery. If you do decide to venture forth to that dwarven vestige of evil, then I will mark its location on your map. Also, I have the power to take you there if you wish. My beloved daughter, I see you are thorough in your search of the Hand. The last entries describe her resolve to find a way to reforge the Union with those accursed dwarves. I never saw her again. Fools! Can you not discern it with your own mind? Those dwarves committed the worst atrocity knowing its impact on me. They murdered my daughter. For that I will never forgive them. For the punishment I suffered for my arrogance and pride, Labellus be damned if he thinks I will forgive them for what they did. I would stay in this cursed form, never to see Arvindor, if it meant I could make the dwarves pay for their crime. Leave now! I will not speak of this anymore! The Heartstone's divination had at last revealed the source of the evil in the mountains. Ahead, loomed the solitary peak that housed the dwarven stronghold known as Dorne's Deep. With Laryl's warnings of dwarven treachery still ringing in their ears, the heroes readied their weapons and started toward the cave entrance and whatever challenges lay beyond. Thank you. 
Fighting their way through the Aurogs in the upper chambers, the party descended deeper into the bowels of the dwarven stronghold. Gradually, the hewn passageway transitioned from stone to ice, as if the dwarves had run out of room within the mountain and had expanded their tunnels into the adjoining glacier. Icy blasts of wind whipped through the passage as it wound its way through the glacier and out onto the frozen surface above. as the vision foretold. I am honored by your choice. The journey is a long one, and our quest is urgent. I shall summon the wind to carry us through the mountains and over the tundra. Know this. Should you wish to return to this place, it is within my power to bring you back. But walking upon the wind taxes one's spirit greatly. It may be days before I can make the journey again. Now, are you prepared to depart? Within its swirling mists lies the knowledge of all things. Past and future. Endings and beginnings. It is all here, hidden from view waiting to be revealed to those who have eyes to see. Far to the north, beyond the wind-swept peaks of the spine of the world, beyond the realms of men who call themselves civilized, dwell a people whose way of life is built upon the gift of sight. Among the tribes of the Uthgard, the visions of a shaman serve to guide his people through the fog of an uncertain future. So it was with Yoldare, elder and shaman to the tribe of the bear. For it was his visions that foretold the return of a slain king awakened from the halls of death by a spirit consumed by vengeance. His vision carried him across the tundra to a place where men built their homes beneath an ancient oak with branches that stretched skywards to embrace the clouds. It is here that his vision showed him the faces of the strangers that would journey far across a sea of ice and snow. To the frozen north, these heroes would come, drawn into a twisted maze of shared destinies that would lead us all into the cold and terrible heart of winter. Outside the settlement your people call Lonely Wood. Of the ten towns, it is the nearest to my people's homeland and will no doubt fall first 
if my people heed Wolfdane's call to war. Now I must leave you, for I am not welcome among the homes of these southerners. Though we journey towards the same destination, our paths are not one. My place is at the side of my king. Already I have been gone too long. From here, you must go alone. The people of this town will know the way to the camp of my people. Travel swiftly and safely. We shall meet again when you stand before the council in the great Mead Hall. I announce Wolfdale, blessed and guided by the spirit of Jared, once king of the tribe of the Bear, now king of the tribe of the Great Worm, son of Fengar the Fearless, slayer of the Dwarven Spy in single combat with a single stroke of his blade, slayer of the Great Bear. Enough. Your words honor me, but they are wasted on these outlanders. They know nothing of our ways, and must surely find such things tedious. Then perhaps at another time you shall. For now, however, I would know why you have come before me. The one known as Wolfdane died and was laid to rest. As his spirit prepared to leave the shell of his body, he had a vision. Jared, the savior of old, appeared before him. He asked that Wolfdane join with him. He said that together they could return the tribes to their former glory. It was an honor that Wolfdane could not refuse. I awoke that day. I am neither Wolfdane nor Jared, but both joined as one. It is through me that the tribes have come together. And through me, my people shall rule the North once more. Now. I want to know why you have come to me. Speak, Outlander. I was not aware that our peoples were at war. Perhaps the fact that savages have gathered at your doorstep prompted your visit. With respect, an interesting word for an Outlander to use. Is this the same respect shown to us when the Ten Towns stole our lands? Room for all? Your civilization has spread across Faerun like a plague of locusts. To the east, west, and south, the land reeks with the stench of your cities. Here in the north, the land remained pure until your people discovered the fish of the lakes. Now your pestilence strikes here as well. What new discovery will lead your people even further into our lands? What other treasures will you steal from us? No, there will be no room for my people here. You will press on, driving us further north, until the land ends and the cold kills us. So you say, Outlander, but you know nothing of what you speak. My people have already been driven far from their ancestral lands. One only needs to look at a map to see the truth of my words. Our tribes once roamed freely from the spine of the world in the south to the endless sea in the north. Now, we cannot travel south beyond Kelvin's Cairn without your leave. Fully half of our ancestral lands are denied us. Well said, Outlander. 
So, what common ground should we build this foundation upon? Would trade suffice? No. We are a simple people, with nothing that you would find of value. Cultural ties, perhaps? No. We are nomadic in nature, and cannot abide the confining cities in which you thrive. Spiritually? No. Even now, our most holy site, Jared Stone, is denied to us, sealed away beneath an outlander temple. We worship Tempas, not Tempus. Your people have even gone so far as to change his name and deny us even that small link. So you feel names and titles have no value, Outlander? To us, a name defines us as a people and carries with it honor and respect. Yet you would dare to make light of it, even when a god's name is concerned. You insult us. If I believed you to be a delegate of the Ten Towns that you claim to be, then we could come to terms. However, you are not what you seem, Outlander. Look at you. Are armor and blades the trappings of a diplomat? I think not. It is more likely that you are an assassin sent to slay me, just like the last delegate sent by the Ten Towns. You will find his head outside my tent. Then you are a spy sent by the Ten Towns to learn of our strengths and weaknesses. In either case, I cannot let you leave this tent alive. Stay your hand, mighty Wolfdane. These strangers bear our people no malice upon my oath. I know this, for it was I who bade them to appear before this council. I see. Tell me, Yolder, why would you do such a thing? Their coming was foretold by a vision. I have been to the other side, great king. The spirits have shown me these heroes and other images that speak the will of Tempas. If Tempas has called these strangers to us, then surely we cannot dishonor ourselves by slaying them within the hallowed halls of Hengoro. Very well. If it is the will of Tempas, then I will hear more of it. Tell me of your vision, Yolder. Why are these outlanders among our people? I... I do not know. The vision was unclear as to what purpose they must serve, but it must... Unclear? You dare to stand before me, speak the will of Tempas, and yet you are unclear as to what our Lord demands of us? How can you wear the mantle of a shaman if his voice does not ring true throughout your very being? I will hear nothing more from you, Yolder. You have failed your people and me. From this day forward, you shall be exiled to the burial isle. Contemplate your failure until you join with our ancestors. As for these outlanders, I will not contest even the flawed vision of a shaman. If it is the will of Tempas that they live, then so be it. Remove them from my sight.